People always ask me, can we reverse the damage from eating a genetically modified diet? Well, mice in an Italian study give us some hope. They were fed genetically modified soy for eight months and showed damage to their livers, pancreas, and testicles. But when they were put on a non-GM soy diet for the next month, a lot of the problems reversed. When we teach uh, doctors in this country and other countries about the importance of diet, one of the key factors that we teach is avoid all GMO foods. One thing that's consistent in every single patient is removal of GMOs. I've had a lot of different patients come in with various stages of chronic disease. That's what I specialize in, sort of these complex cases. And by changing the diet around, uh, changing their nu nutritional status, a lot of the things that they come in with literally just go away. Of course, GMO isn't the only thing that I do. I would never just do that. I use whatever works for patients individually. We look at what they're eating, and we take out the genetically modified foods and the industry foods, and they all get better. So it pretty much takes from two days to two to three months, and some people continue to recover over a couple of years, but it never doesn't work. We have to somehow or other educate the public so that they understand that they, they have a choice. They don't have to eat genetically engineered foods. There are only nine genetically modified food crops but their derivatives are found in over 70% of the foods in the supermarket, particularly the processed foods. There are four ways to avoid GMOs. By organic, by products that say non-GMO, by products listed in our non-GMO shopping guide, or avoid the at-risk ingredients altogether. Principally, soy, corn, cottonseed oil, canola oil, and sugar from sugar beets. Most of those crops are genetically engineered. So if it's grown in the U.S. and it doesn't say organic or non-GMO, it's genetically engineered. If we can avoid those, I think certainly that would be a big step in improving people's health in terms of allergies, autoimmune disease, and, and a lot of conditions that we don't really even know too much about. Also, aspartame is derived from a genetically engineered microorganism. Just Google aspartame and symptoms and camp out for a few hours. You'll never eat aspartame again. When people hear about the health dangers of GMOs, the first thing they want to do is avoid them. Millions of people are trying to avoid GMOs, and we make it easier for you. Go to non-gmoshoppingguide.com and find thousands of products that have been verified as non-GMO. Or download the free iPhone application, Shop No GMO. Or get our booklet. It makes it much easier for you to shop for healthier non-GMO products. And we're very thankful for the organizations that are now certifying products that are on GMO so that we can have that assurance that we're buying something that we support. And when you look for non-GMO labels, look for non-GMO Project Verified. They're a third-party verifier, and they back up the claims that companies make. In the last year, sales of non-GMO Project Verified products have gone from $348 million to over $1.2 billion. So the growth is incredible. It's 219% growth, and that's because so many more brands are enrolling because so many more consumers are asking for it. Currently, there are no legal requirements in the U.S. to label a product containing GMOs. The failure to disclose in this um, to me is the real issue. Europe labels these things, Australia labels these things, Asia labels these things, 
And yet here in the U.S., we've all just been blissfully ignorant. I have a problem with that because it's not in the best interest of my family. It's hard enough as a mom to have to go in and read every label. Your time's limited, and you really have to be knowledgeable about it. It should, be, it should have been in there all along. I feel like we were tricked. We're all part of a large, uncontrolled experiment, and we aren't getting answers because we don't know who's eating genetically engineered food and who isn't. So we have no way to do the studies. I suspect that this is the intention of the manufacturer. Let's so confuse the situation that no liability could ever be ascertained, even, even if there is a big problem. Right now there are about five million kids with food allergies and there's no way of knowing what is in the food that you're feeding your child unless it's labeled. These products are on the shelf before you even know they are, and now they're in, in everything. I don't want to be a human lab rat, and I certainly don't want my two-year-old daughter to be a human lab rat. You know, if you like GMOs, you think they're great, okay, label it, you know, just be proud of it. Buy it, label it, and, you know, but we have a right not to buy it. So, you know, that's our issue. You know, we're taking that to Washington, you know, we got to bring outside pressure, we got to bring a wake-up call to FDA, and, yeah, make our voices heard. You want to know the dirty little secret of the biotech industry that they never talk about? No one gets up in the morning wanting to buy a GMO food. No one, not a single human being on earth, gets up and says, boy, I can't wait to go to the supermarket and buy a GMO food. And why is that? That's because after 30 years and hundreds of billions of dollars of public and private investment, they haven't been able to come up with one thing in this food that actually helps the consumer. No better taste, no lower price, no more nutrition, nothing, zip, zero, nada. How do we get rid of genetically engineered foods? It's much easier than you think. And we don't have to ask the government for a bailout. We can do it ourselves. In Europe, when they achieved the tipping point of consumer rejection at the end of April 1999, within about a week, most major food companies committed to stop using GM ingredients. They had become a marketing liability. In the United States, as parents became aware of the cancer link to bovine growth hormone, it was kicked out of most American dairies. How many Americans will it take avoiding GMOs to create a tipping point in the United States. We think only 5%. Why? If the same food companies that already kicked GMOs out in Europe see even a small drop in market share in the United States that they can directly attribute to anti-GMO sentiment on the rise here, they will get rid of it here like they already got rid of it in Europe. It becomes a food industry sell signal getting rid of GMOs and we can do it ourselves. These companies are parasites. They don't care. They want to make money, they want to run governments, and they are right now running governments. I don't know how long, but I think their time is running out. While you can't control what was produced yesterday, by what you spend today, you get to control what is produced tomorrow. Moms and consumers are the ones that are going to make this change. They're going to be the ones who are going to drive the change. If we demand that products be safe and healthy for our children, if we refuse to purchase products that we know are genetically modified, then the industry is going to have to respond. Because at some point, you know, mothers are the ones that are out there buying 80% of the consumer products, including the food supplies and the cleaning supplies and whatnot. And if we stop supporting those companies that are doing this, then they're going to feel it in their pocketbook. And unfortunately, I think that's where it really matters to them. A mother protecting her child is one of the most fundamental forces in nature and most women would do anything to protect their child and so to harness that power in a positive way is, is something that n no one could mess with. This impacts everything and everyone. It's not just an agriculture issue, it's not just a food industry issue, it's an ever living creature issue. It's the most dangerous thing facing human beings in our generation. Should you be concerned? I should think you'd be scared silly, not only for your children, but for you. Why do you think so many people are sick now? We cannot tolerate what's going on any longer. 
We must stand up and be counted. We must write our politicians. We must talk to the people at the store and say, I'm not going to buy it unless it says not genetically engineered. I think we now can change the system. The world is ready. You know, sometimes we hear that uh, Monsanto can't be beat, you know, that the, the genie's out of the bottle or the genes are out of the bottle. But that just is not true. In the last 15 years, you and me and all of us, we have defeated genetically engineered tomatoes. They don't exist. Genetically engineered potatoes, they tried that. We got rid of that. Genetically engineered wheat. That was Monsanto's big, big, big try. All the wheat in the world to be genetically engineered. We defeated that. Genetically engineered rice. We defeated that. Genetically engineered biopharmaceuticals. This is when they were going to put all those vaccines into your food. That was defeated. Genetically engineered alfalfa, which is going to destroy our organic dairy industry. For six years, we have stopped that, and we're right in court to stop it again right now. Genetically engineered bent grass and all your schools and golf courses, we've defeated that. So they can be beat, they have been beat, and we will win. We will win this. It's in our hands. It's right in front of us. It's just a matter of avoiding genetically modified foods and inspiring others to do the same. And my new score, I'm going to try to get the GMOs away from there, too. What are you going to do? Just keep on telling them, and then they'll probably get it away. What are you going to tell them? Stop doing the GMOs and start doing the good food. If you give animals a choice, I know for sure they'll take the non-GMO every time. We have a dog, a mascot dog in the office, cute little cocker spaniel. Her name's Chloe. and. We decided, well, let's see if she can tell the difference between GMO and non-GMO. She immediately went to a pile of non-GMO corn versus the same right there next to her, GMO corn. And she just tasted it, spit it out, went to the GMO, uh, the non-GMO corn and ate it. And Chloe does this every time. It's absolutely amazing. I have feed that I store in my garage for my livestock. Our non-GMO feed uh, is stored directly beside a conventional feed. Uh, we have seen where the mice, the rats, the raccoons will attack our non-GM feed and leave the GM feed untouched. I obtained four or five cobs of, of genetically modified corn, uh, took them home, threw them into my hands, which I thought they were going to eat them, but they, uh, they, they just ran, they ran over like to eat them, but they didn't touch any of it. I set up a feeder side by side with the regular feed store feed, and the chickens chose the non-GMO feed, naturally. They emptied the feeder without touching the other one, so I refilled it and I said, I'm going to play a trick on my birds. I flipped it, flipped the two feeders from spot to spot, and the birds still chose the non-GMO feed which was incredible. 